Well, I'm just one. See, a few years ago, they um, lots used to get flooded quite a bit. They used to blame it on the floodgates of the mill. Yes. Well, then they decided to knock the is a pathway there, which I think was man-made between the, to, uh, that was built to keep the water in the mill head for the water mill. Yes. But when they start pulling that about, they come across some millstones. Which which footpath are we talking about now? <coughs> the, the, other the other side of the floodgates, which goes across to Purdy's estate. Yes. Now in, in there was millstones. Now I wonder why they were buried. So it must, there must have been, because like that roadway or pathway must have been built for a reason to supply the water for the water mill. Well certainly that path is on an embankment which is retaining the tide pond, isn't it? Yes, yes. And over it now, I, I know it so the water, if, if the water builds up in the you know, other side of the water mill, yes. they can get away. Now, what they dug out of a millstone there, so that must have been buried years and years ago. When, in the days when you still were running the tide mill, back before the war, there were two pairs of millstones. How yeah. long did a pair of millstones last? They, they, they had to be re-chiselled, didn't they? Yes, they did. I suppose... I don't, I don't know really, because see they weren't they weren't running continuously, yeah. and I suppose it depends upon how hard the barley was. Yeah. Now, if if a barley's soft, it might blunt the stones more than what a hard barley does. Yes, and I imagine every time it runs out, you damage the stone slightly more than you're even damaging ah. it while it's while it's running. Yes, but the sudden happened there. There was a bell there, it used to yeah. tingle, that used to show, because you had a, sh the bell used to come down in a little trough, but when that feed stopped, that bell used to ring. That warned you that you were... That warned you the bin was out. Yes, and that in a few minutes' time the yeah. stones would be, be running dry. Running dry, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. And you actually stopped the stones from turning while there was still grain in there. So you'd never actually no, that, touch stones if you could help it? No, no, no. I had, see, I don't know, I don't know how quite they worked that because I used to go in there and have a look. I was only uh, just had long enough school there when they were doing that. And uh, I'd never see them actually stop it or start it. Oh, yeah. The only means of stopping and starting that was opening the sluice to let the water, either let the water in or let them stop it altogether. So that, they had two sluices behind the yes. wheel. Now one went down if a, and one went up. It depends on the amount of water was in the head there. Yes. And the, the water went underneath the wheel? Underneath, yeah. Being yeah. Being a tide and they used to run that as long as they could, till the tide come in. Yes. Then when the tide started to come in, the water wouldn't get away, so they had to stop. Right. And do you know roughly how many hours they were able to operate it here? Uh, <clears throat> well, you see, you could only you'd run it mostly when the tide was a big tide, say any time between twelve and three or four. So, but when you did when you did that, you could start early in the morning when you I suppose they used to get up at five, come down directly to board. See, when you get a big tide, it takes longer to come in and longer to get away. So really you only had a matter of four or five hours you could run after on each tide. So you, uh, you've seen that uh, now, for instance, you come here, say you've got a, a night tide. The tide would be clear, perhaps the tide would be all gone by four o'clock. But it, it, the bloke here used to run that, used to come in about five, start up. He'd probably run four or five hours until about about ten or eleven and then it'd be shut because the, wa the water would be coming back in again. And then you'd get another four or five hours... Uh, at night time, you say, yeah. Tide, yeah. yeah. So if you're only not operating during the night, you might well miss out the opportunity for yeah. running but the mill. Yeah, but having spoken of those tides, uh, 
used to grind barley in there. So the barge used to come up, used to have so much up in the mill, about, uh, well, I'd say they used to go in quarters in them days. Generally when they had barley come up, they'd come up with 500 quarter loads. You had 200 to the mill, because they had a grinder in there. But the rest used to be carried off. Uh, they used to ring a, take the salads off the topsail and the sheet and rig up a ginny wheel. And they used to haul that up, and then that's when the farm workers used to come into it, because the farm used to help the mill, and we used to go on the farm when we were slack. And they used to push the barley up, and put a row of bags on a hold, so as you could hide up for the blokes to carry it off. But they used to carry it up from the uh, barge, onto the wharf, up the wharf, across the road, and into the water mill. Yes. Uh, you, you said then that sometimes worked on the mill, on the farms when business was slack. Yeah. Was this business was slack or because the tides were wrong or? No, when, um, when the mill was a bit slack. Yes. So you used to be, always used to say, we generally come a bit slack in May, June, July time. I always used to say it's a new, new potatoes are in the market and put more people eat potatoes than they do bread. Yes. Anyway, I was down there one year for about five or six weeks. Which farm was this? Great Hall. Great Hall. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And what jobs did you do down there then? Um, Traving the, uh, wheat, you know, sacking up and trave, haymaking, or um, yes. well, any job that wanted to go. Generally, it was harvest time, roughly. Yes, you might have catched the end of the haymaking season. Yes, yes, yeah. the beginning yeah. of the... Yeah. Well, that, was a, that was some long hours. We didn't used to finish till five or six or when it got dark. When it was Saturdays and weekends. Yes. So it, it was basically that sort of work again. That's what, yeah. In yeah. the harvest field, yes. Yeah. And uh, did you look forward to that as a break from what the What is it? It was change. Yes. Yeah, change. You would never thought of becoming a farm worker full time then? Oh, no, no. There's not so many now, is there? Not nowadays. No, course, no, no, no. I was thinking in terms of uh, just before the war. No. Now the farm lots down there has changed, I can get them now. Well, was Great Hall itself still it's, it's, standing in those days? Uh, Great Hall, yes. Um, who lived there? I don't know who lived there then. Who was the boss of the, of the mill in those days? Well, Donald Rankin. Donald? Yeah. Yes. Oh, before the war was his uh, dad, Harold Rankin. Yes. Okay. D Donald Rankin lived down in that little hall. Donald Little Hall. Little Hall then, yes. And uh, his father before the war lived where? At Broom Hills. Broom Hills. From Broom Hills, yeah. Right. And who else was involved in the... the um... Oh, um, Dennis Brown, the farmer from uh, Beecham's over at Shopland. Yes. He was on the farm side. They, because they ran there. And uh, what was the farm basically doing? What was it growing? Was it to have cattle? Or oh, it was more cattle in those days. See, there was a shepherd, and they had uh, sheep, cows, horses, and uh, pigs. But not so much in the chicken line. Mm. It's only since the latter part of the time where the, the sheep, or sheep, I think the sheep must have disappeared during the war. Then the farm was transferred, I think that was sold out, the milk business. But uh, they developed the chicken industry then, broilers and all that. Yes. yes it was a, one, of the, one of the changes of, in food consumption, wasn't it? Yes, in yeah. yeah. Did you have much spare time while you were uh, with the mill? And if so, what did you do with it when you're not in, at the mill? Well, I don't know. So you, you, you were there all day. Yes. You know, but before the war, there's not much in the garden, there's not the cinemas to go to. I was too young to drink. Yes. So, but I made up since. <laughs> <laughs> so, that after the war, then, what did you do in your spare time? Uh, well, it depends well, once, what. Once you've gone back to the mill after the war. Yeah, it depends upon what, you, um, what I was doing, really. Yeah. Uh, I like gardening, I'm very fond of gardening. I probably yeah. took off my grandfather. He was a good gardener. He was a good gardener. He got one or two medals, I think, for it. Oh, well, big, 
big a garden, it's not surprising. But he, did, yeah. he actually took the trouble to do his own garden as well as... Well, his own, yes, yes. Yeah. ...as the one whose job was. Yeah. Yes. And did he have a speciality? I think he's got one or two medals for growing croissants. And how about you? Oh, I'm, I'm going to sofa, I know. Yeah. No. You didn't specialise. You, what did you grow in your garden? Um, well, put it like this, I never used to buy vegetables at all. No? So vegetables are the, the vegetables are your yeah. idea. Mine, that's did you it. grow flowers at all, in fact? I did, did used to, but um, I was sooner vegetables, really. Yes. Yeah. And what did you do with the flowers that you grew? Just, just looked at them in the garden, or did you cut them and bring them indoors? Or? I had them indoors, no, it depends. I used to like to see them in the garden best. Yes. So I think they, I mean, if you cut them in the garden, that spoils the garden. Yes. And you bring them indoors, especially now with central heat, they don't last five minutes. Yeah. What were the conditions like in this house when you first moved in? Did you have, you didn't have central heating then, I don't Oh, quite cool, no, it was gas lights, it, it uh, they weren't so good as they are now, put it like that. Yes. See, they, their decoration in those days was a uh, different one. In what way? Well, no wall, well, uh, all drab finishings, I think. Every, this place was all heavily varnished, dark varnished. It looked dark and gloomy. And what colours would the uh, skirting boards be? Dark, but, but in here they were sort of like mahogany. Yes. And so were the doors and the window frames. And the colour of the wall was also... Green, I think, I green. remember. Yeah, yeah, green. Matching your tiled fireplace, was it? I think that was the idea of it, yes. That's an original fireplace? That is, yeah. Yes. And the whole lot, that. Is it? Yeah. And when was this house built? Uh, 1926. 1926. Yes. Yeah. So you've got a bit of Art Nouveau work on the side of your mantel, of the fireplace there. Which yes, is. yeah. That I can't sort of clean that. I'd like to clean it, but it's a it's a no a pattern. So if you start to clean it, you're going to rub it off. Yes. That's rather nice. And where did how did you cook in those days? Was that or oh, gas stove? Gas stove. Gas stove. Yeah. yeah. And the electricity. When did that arrive? Um. Uh, I think that come it just been put put up here before I moved up here. So I suppose that must have come nineteen thirties. Yes. Because when I I moved up here, there's the old gas lamps are still here. Yes. See the old bloke go around with a in the street. It's mean? up here, up this road. Yes. Yeah. Um, see him go around with his rod, and pulling the lamp lighter, you know. Yes. And he was pulling the the gas on and putting yeah. his little light up to to. That's it. Yeah. To, Lighted. Yeah. Yes. Don't know how he used to do that. He used to ride around on a bicycle. He did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hard used to stop. He used to get this stick up and on, on the coming light. Do you remember when they first put tarmac on the road? Was the tarmac here when you first came? T tarmac. No. What they used to do then in those days had an old steamroller. Yes. And had a cart behind it, well, four wheels and had a, a cloth at the back where a tar used to come out. Had a crane on top of this thing with a barrel which gravity used to soak. Yes. And uh, there used to be a gang of, little gang of blokes along the side of the road with pea ballast. And as this thing rolled, rolled by, so they'd put stones over the, um, on top of it. Yes. And that had been like that since before you came here? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's only the last few years they've sort of tarmac it. Yes. yes it's, um, of course, that, that was my business. Oh, was it? roads. Yeah. But uh, I can remember the tar and chips yeah. as being the standard. And of course, many country roads have got very little else to them even now. Now, now those roads, I think, were made up more frequently than what they are today. How often do you think they were made up? With, no, with, every year or? No, I only had to go about two or three years. Yes. And of course it wasn't the vehicles in those days, 
but would I wonder if it was a service for the horse and carts. What was the condition of them like when they were next made up? Had they developed potholes and things like that? No, not really, no. I think it's these heavy lorries that make the potholes. Because your lorries, they presumably had rubber tyres? Yes, yeah. yeah. Solid or pneumatic? Or solid. They were solid. The lorries, yeah. But uh, all the lorries at the start, the only lorries I can remember having pneumatic tyres were the steam wagons. Mm. Uh, no, solid rubber tyres, didn't they? We had a, first I can remember was an old phone, then there was a Sentinel and a Garrett. They had solid rubber tyres. Yes. And when, when did you think they were last used? After the war or before <coughs> well, the war? No, we met one Sentinel broke down in 1934 at Christmas time. Could it block down in the blocked the road in East Street near Palmer's Corner and nothing could get by. And I, that finished up in Smoothie's yard because they were big engineers about here at the time, Smoothie's. And they were in Weirpon Weir Road. Weir Road. They were all with two or three sets of steam ploughs yes. and uh, slashing tackles and steam rollers. They had about five or six steam rollers in that yard. Yes. What happened to all them, I don't know. Thank you. Because a bloke who used to try um, one of the steam rollers, he used to live just across the road here in Moulton Villas. And he was working for the he, district he, council? He, he, worked, he worked for Smoothie. Oh, for Smoothie? He, he, he yeah. used to see him driving one of these steam engines, yeah. steam rollers. And the, this was a steam roller a for, steam roller, for yeah. the roads? Yes, 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 yes. And do you remember the steam uh, engines for farm purposes? Were they still going in your day? What, for farming? What, yes. How do you mean steam blows? Steam blows. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I used to very often go out, well, I see them going by the afternoon when I come to school. It was find out where they used to go, and they used to go somewhere around Pagelsham Way. I used yes. to watch them over the night time. Because I always used to, always, I say always, every other, every, one, every other year they used to give a good old ploughing up, because these things used to go very deep in the ground, didn't they? Yes. And you used to do it when the stubble was there, so there was no burn of stubble in those days, was there? Yeah. They ploughed it all in. But in those days, of course, they used as much straw as they could, uh, so there was less to burn as well. Oh, yes, yes. Well, they used straw for cattle more and for clamping the spuds, didn't they? All the spuds were clamped in those days. And where would the clamps have been? In, in the farmyard? Or, in, in, the or field. in the fields? In the fields, yeah. See, so I used to clamp them in the field, I dug them out there. When, when did that practice not stop? Or... I don't know. It's not all that long ago, I don't think. Because I think I can remember it in the period, what, since 1960-something. Yeah. Oh yeah, but they clamp them still in the 60s, I'm certain. Yes. Because it's only the last few years they've gone into this burning stuff, is it? And another thing is, the, short, the straw is shorter. Yes. They put stuff on to make it grow and they do something to stop it growing. Mm. And something to kill it, kill it all off, don't they? Yes. That's right. Did you, you remember, presumably, Rochford Market? Oh yes, yes. And wh which day was that on? That was on a Thursday. But you had all been at work then, presumably, so you couldn't get Well, up. I remember that when I was a nipper, because I used to live down there. Yes, quite. Old bloke used to come out the King's Head, well, the King's Head yard, yard, the back of the pub, you see where they used to keep chickens and rabbits, that's where they used to auction them off. Yeah. And the bloke used to come out there with a bell, he used to clang it, go around the square, and that was a signal for the market, market or the buying and selling to start. It, for the, in, in the square as well as in the chicken area at the back? Well, I'll take it so, yes, yeah. yes. yes. And that, how many animals would you have said were in the square on a, on a busy market day? I, I don't know. 
So you, every so often you had a big sheep market. Yes. And they used to come, well, I used to go with my cousin, we used to have a barrow, four-wheel barrows in it, but that was the only toys I had in those days, four-wheel barrow. And we used to go up to the other side of Warner's Bridge. We had an idea when they were coming. Yeah. And we used to follow them back. The old drover used to, because all he had, a, he had about 50 sheep with him, yeah. perhaps more. He used to drive them along a the road, just him and his dog, and we used to come up and go over the side, stop them from going through the hedges in people's gardens. Yes. And I reckon, I'd say there's quite 50 sheep, yeah. but then you had about 20 or 30 pigs, so there was well over, 100, uh, well over 100 animals in there at one time, I reckon. Yes. Could be. So they were selling uh, cattle as well as the pigs and sheep? They, yeah, yeah, they sold the cattle at one corner, then where the pigs were auctioned off, I don't know. Which corner of the market square was the cattle corner? The cattle corner, right up the corner, which is now where the library is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Does the, the, um, the Warner Market House went last century, didn't it? Oh, yes, yes. But there was a cattle trough in the middle. Is there still a cattle trough there? No, that's, that's disappeared. That ought, that's a pity that's gone because that was a commemorative thing for the... Um, Coronation of King Edward VII, I believe. 1910? Yes, that's, yes. Yeah. But they say it's a Hogley Witch. No, Edward VII, you say, that was 1901. Yeah. I, think about it. I don't know who he is. Because when um, good King George came to the, King George, what, would be fifth, fifth. He, ca he came to the throne in 1910, wasn't he? That's it? right, yes. So yeah. Edward was uh, 1901 when the yes. Queen died. Yes. Yes, I believe it's in that trough they say it's in Hockley Woods, which uh, I don't see why it should go on there. No. no. There is, of course, still a trough at the end of Fountain Lane. Presumably why it's called Fountain Lane. There's a water trough. Oh, oh. Uh, and presumably a tap there. Oh. I never actually stopped to look at it. Uh, on the main road, if you jump yeah. Fountain yeah. Lane. There was they always used in this trough in the square. There always seemed to be water in there. Now whether that was connected to the mains or not, I don't know. The Rochard water supply is a story in itself. Yeah. I know this is some of the best water about here for miles around. Yeah. Because uh, I remember when I went to school, see steam lorries. Um, yes, yeah, steam lorries by the brook picking up water. What did the brook look like in those days? Very good. But the brook was presumably just banked on either side. Oh, yes, that's on, it. Yeah, on, there was on the concrete channel that's there. No, of course, nothing like that at all. There was a few, little, there was a five or six steps which led down to it where the blokes used to go and put the hose in yes. and uh, suck up water. Yeah, our lorries used to use it, and so did or for marriages. They, I've seen them there, like uh, they had steam wagon come from uh, culture. I've seen where, them. Whereabouts was that? Near the bottom of the station approach? No, in, it was in the first, uh, this side of the approach, about halfway along where the steps was. Yes. Yeah. But nowadays we've got to f take away the bypass which is there. Oh, um, yeah, that was, yeah. That, uh, and at the other end there used to be a water tower, which was all, all pumping water along because that was some of the say, some of the best water in the belt here, and that used to pump water, I think, to South End. And where was the water tower? Up, up near the other, just the other side of the freight house, which is there now. There used to be oh, a up, cine, there used to be the, up in the railway yard. Yes, there used to be a cinder track behind the freight house, going this side of the freight house, and up there used to be a cattle pen. Yep. And uh, market days there used to be cattle come by rail, and they used to drive them along that in the track up to the market in the square and take them the same way back. You s going back to the sheep, you said they normally came over Warner's Bridge, so yeah. they were coming from the South End direction. S yes, that's it, yeah. they never come from farms in the other direction? Were they not sheep? Well... In the Rochard Hundred? No, I, I, don't, I don't know. No, I used to think that's where there used to be a lot come from that way. Yes. Yeah. Of course, there's Bendel's. I think well, did you get paid for your services in keeping the sheep out of the um, 
No, 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 no. We used to do it. We used to do it. No, we did nothing like that. We used to do it for it was an hour or two out, really, you know. We, we enjoyed it. Of course, only doing the school holidays. How much were you paid when you first started work? Ten and six. For 48 hours? 48 hours. And even when I joined up, my wage was only 35 shillings a week. In the army? No, when I joined up in the army in 1941, yeah. my wage yeah. down the mill was only 35 shillings yes. a week. And what do they pay you in the army? Oh, you've asked me something now. But when I first went in, I think it was 10 bob a week. Yes. Yeah. It only reached four shillings a day in 1954 when I did my national service. Yeah. 28 shillings a week. Cool. <laughs> yes, I don't know what sort of wage I finished up with in the army. I was um, what they call a GPOAC. That was an uh, assistant to the gunnery officer. And a bit uh, yes. on the technical side. Yes. And what, what in fact did you do to assist him? Well, I, I did assist him. I think he, he assisted me. Because <laughs> I got more, more knowledge, I think, than what he did. Yes. Because... Um, so you were doing what? Adjusting the range of guns? Yes, as my, that was my job to plot the targets. Yes. You know, and you had to be, you had to be accurate and uh, give out the orders to the guns. Yes. You had a, you know, the elevation and the range switch. Yes. Yeah. And how did you know what you should be doing? How, how, how did you know what you were firing at, if you like? Uh, we didn't know. We had the orders used to come down from the OP, you see. We didn't know what sort of target we were aiming at. So the OP would tell you to raise your sights a bit, or yes, your yes, sights. yes, that's it. Yes. And uh, if it's got to be more, you know, so many degrees, one way or the other. Yes. Yeah. And you passed the message. How many guns did you have? Four. Four. And you, you passed the message to all of them to. Yeah. What they had to do. You had a megaphone. You should show. Because I used to had a good voice in them days, and. Uh, I remember one morning in Italy, I shouted so much that some guns on another site were running about, I thought it was for them. So you, were, you went abroad in April 1942, I think. 42, yes, uh, yeah. Where did you go then? Uh, went to, um, we finished up in a place called El Marza. Now that's... North Africa? Actually, North Africa, yeah. We had, went round the Cape, up the Suez. No, we didn't go in the Suez, we popped in, stopped at the Red Sea, because that was blocked. Cause yes. Just before then, we had a, Jerry had, had a bombing raid there, and uh, several boats of Georgia and one or two others were sunk in the entrance there, so that couldn't be used. Yes. So we went from uh, El Mar, that's a few miles from Cairo. And then uh, from there, we went up in the desert, you know. We went, I went out of the draft, but then we got to, uh, Signed to a unit when I went up in the desert. And who were you assigned to? Was it one of the Royal Artillery? That's it, yeah, 4th Indian Division. It was a Lemfield Royal Artillery Field Regiment. Royal, Royal Artillery. Yes, in, yeah. so the, the, did you say Enfield? So no, what, no Royal, Field, Royal Field Artillery. Royal Field Artillery. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Yes. Attached to the 4th Indian Division it was then. Fourth Indian. Fourth Indian, yeah. And did you do the, the, the cross country all the way from Egypt across to. Uh, oh, we, yes, we, we, right, we, we went right up to Tunis. Yes. Yeah. And then did you cross to. We didn't go. Uh, we Sicily went. Or not? No, we didn't go to Sicily because, uh, see, that unit, they were. They weren't mobile, you know, not like a tank or anything like that. We were just like a uh, infantry, and you had to wait till we got a line settled in, you know, before we before we went in in yeah. the scene. So, I mean, we weren't like a, an invasion force, put it like that. Yeah. We hadn't got the equipment for that. Yeah. 
So where did you go to and where did you land in Italy? Uh, Toronto. Yes. And yeah. from there? Oh, we went up, we went up, Gradually we went up, no, with the, when we pushed up to Lens, we went up to the east coast of Lanciano, then uh, we pulled out and went round to Casino. So you took part in the bombardment Bomb of yeah, Casino? Yeah, yeah. That must have been quite a, a you know, yeah, remarkable event in your life. Yeah, very muddy there. We actually, we got a lot, got a bit, um, well, duffied up there because uh, it, we were putting an attack in. It's supposed to go when it's six o'clock in one morning. And uh, Jerry counterattacked at quarter to six. That threw everything out of gear. Yes. We lost quite a lot of infantry there. And we, we were there for a few weeks, then we pulled out and uh, went around the other side. Yes. So, had you been on the east side? to start with, the side you came from. Yeah. 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 And then you carried on from there up further north? Further up, yes, that's it, yeah. We went for the next line was the Gothic line, and then um, a little bit farther on, we got flooded out. Now, we had dry weather. We were in some spot, I don't know why they put us in there, and we were underwater. All the mount water come down from the mountains, and they were we only had one gun that could fire. Yeah. And, and where, how long did you stay in Italy? Because you said you finished in, in Greece. Greece so yeah, well, we pulled out of there and uh, done what, a bit of... At what stage did you pull out? Had, had Italy... Well... It, we hadn't, oh, no, I hadn't finished. No. no.